I'm at Silverstone today because ASUS have sponsored us to check out their new OLED gaming monitor. And in order to highlight the high refresh rate G-Sync and super contrast that you get from an OLED screen, we are also going to be doing some passenger laps in some rather nice fancy speedy cars. We've got Aston Martins, we've got Ferraris, and uh, it's going to be a bit of a wild ride. So fasten your seatbelts and uh, let's get on with the video. For this event, rather than Formula 1 cars filling up the garage underneath Silverstone's wing, I found myself confronted with an array of Republic of Gamers equipment from PCs, mice, headsets and of course their new OLED monitor. Fortunately for me, they not only had MotoGP set up with their new OLED screens, oh. <laughs> But they also had some proper driving simulators simulating vehicles of the four-wheel variety. So of course we had to jump on them and that gives us a good opportunity to give a first impressions of the screens. And perhaps the most surprising and most notable aspect of these screens, for me at least, is the fact that we finally now have, in the form of the ROG Swift OLED, an OLED on the market with a DisplayPort, specifically DisplayPort 1.4, allowing for the screen to get up to 138Hz and of course use G-Sync and FreeSync. Now, that might sound like a small thing, but as someone that personally uses three OLEDs at the moment, having a DisplayPort is crucial, especially if you want to run three of these screens at 4K with G-Sync. With current OLEDs that only have HDMI ports, you can run them at 2560 by 1440 with G-Sync, but you also then need to have a graphics card that has three HDMI ports. Whereas with these monitors, obviously they have HDMI and display port. It means that you'll be able to use most graphics cards on the market with them. Small thing, but actually a pretty huge thing if you're going for the absolute ultimate triple screen visual experience with racing simulators and flight simulators. Also of note with the screens is the fact that they have a matte finish instead of the typical completely uh, reflective finish that you'd find on your standard OLED TVs. And even in this video, you can see that the matte finish does a really good job of diffusing the reflections from the environment that we were in here. And ironically, um, this environment is probably one of the worst places to actually make the screens look good. There was a garage door half open to the left. We had spotlights pointing down at the monitors. And then, of course, people mulling around and a open door to the right hand side. And despite all that, you can clearly see on the video how the monitors are diffusing that light to the point where when I was driving, I didn't particularly notice it that much. So you can clearly see what they've done is they've taken all the aspects of what you typically find in a gaming monitor, and what works for that gaming monitor context, and then married it with the beautiful OLED technologies. Uh, don't ever use an OLED screen, guys, because once you do, <laughs> you can't go back. Now, Republic of Gamers were also touting that this screen is particularly bright compared to most OLEDs on the market, not dim like myself, but uh, unless I could test it properly and unless we have proper scientific test data, I can't really comment on that. They looked great in this environment, but this is obviously just a preview first impressions event, so it'll be really interesting to do a proper review of them at a later date. Interestingly though, they did say one of the reasons that they can run the screens much brighter than other OLEDs on the market is that it uses a passive heatsink solution on the rear that keeps the screens nice and cool and also reduces issues of burning or gets rid of them entirely. Again, we'd obviously have to see full on testing of that to really know for sure. Finally, they said that each monitor will arrive in its box with a color chart sheet. So for those of you that are uh, doing photo or video editing you'll have a, a, a tested from the factory sheet that shows you what's going on with those color levels again it's the kind of thing that you need to do proper testing on and this is just a preview first impression so i can't really comment on it after feasting my eyes on the rog swift virtual interpretation of the silverstone racetrack and setting the fastest lap time of anyone at the event it was time to have some passenger laps around the real circuit and experience things with a few more G-forces. Okay, so uh, when you 
come out of the pits at Silverstone, we join after Abbey Corner, the fast right-hander that you normally just lift off into, and then we come on going straight around uh, Farm Curve and onto Village. He's joined into a nice bit of uh, clear air here, getting on the power a bit. Nice smooth break in, turned into the corner, flow through round uh, Farm Curve, Village coming up. So what an absolutely awesome event. Uh, get to going around the track in the cars. The uh, Aston Martin, I think was my favorite of them to experience Silverstone, but the Ferrari was really good fun. Uh, but the Aston Martin was the best. Awesome checking out these, uh, the new OLED screens and trying them on the Vissaro sim rigs with them in triple screen. And the fact that these OLED screens have a display port so you can do triple screen on them without being limited to what graphics cards you can use. Uh, really quite exciting if you're looking for a really high-end OLED gaming monitor. So uh, good stuff, really. We're going to have to obviously wait until we can do proper reviews of the equipment. But a uh, huge thanks to Republic of Gamers for inviting us to this mad time at Silverstone. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you click that like button. Make sure you click the subscribe button. And of course, most importantly, make yourself a cup of tea. Till the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, guys.